everyone, welcome to Felicity Yarn Studio. Zoe here with another FO feature video for you guys. Today I'm going to be sharing the Ponderosa sweater, which is the latest design from Wool and Pine. So I did test knit for them um, again. <laughs> so yes, it is December 8th. This pattern releases today, 2021, if you're watching this in the very far future. So I wanted to share my thoughts and experiences on this really beautiful cabled sweater. And since it's the holiday season and I feel like giving back to you all, um, I hope that you'll watch till the end and I'm going to give away a copy of this pattern to one of you lovely viewers. So stay tuned to the end to find out how to enter to win that. So confession time, this is my first real seamed sweater. Um, I have knit a drop shoulder design before, and that was my Elton, um, but that was not seamed. So this is a little bit different. So I've been trying to get outside of my comfort zone. I am normally a top down in the round type of knitter. Those are my preferred types of garment patterns. Um, so yeah, I've been really intrigued and interested in trying um, different constructions and getting to know some of the different fits out there for garment knitting. For those of you who have been here before or for a while I should say you'll know that I've talked about making a cabled sweater for a while. It's just one of those things that I've never really gotten around to. Um, so when Selena and Abby were asking for test knitters for this one at the end of the Snow Pine um, test knit which I did for them last month I knew that I had to um, jump on board and get in on this Ponderosa. So this um, sweater is a crop design. Again, it's a drop shoulder and it is being billed by Selena and Abby as a layering piece. It is very versatile. I will say that I personally have styled this a couple of different ways for myself and I'll get to that towards the end. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the construction first. So obviously there's cables on the front. Um, so you knit this cabled panel first and then the back is all stockinette. So knit and purl flat back and forth. Um, it's not nearly as cumbersome as it seems. It does go by rather quickly. You're knitting fingering weight yarn on a size five and size six needle for those. And one of the interesting things about the schematics for this garment is it is slightly shorter in the front. So it's kind of supposed to have like a curved front and then the back panel is slightly longer. So you kind of have a high-low hem thing happening. It's not really a true high-low hem. It's really cute and it's one of those things that makes a lot more sense once you see it on a body. Now, as far as the cables go, um, personally, I found them to be relatively easy. Um, they're nothing too crazy, like you're only crossing two over three or three over two at any given time. Um, it's an eight row repeat, but you're only doing those cables on the right side. So there's really only four rows, each motif repeat. So I was able to memorize it pretty quickly. And yeah, you really kind of get going once you kind of have that pattern under your belt and you start to recognize it. Um, I did have a bit of a brain fart moment. Uh, the very first cable motif that I started, I highlighted my chart, but I highlighted the actual chart versus the key backwards, so they didn't match and I was doing the wrong cables in the wrong place. Um, but that was only for one repeat, so it wasn't that much to rip out and fix. Now, if you're new to cables or you've always used a cable needle in the past, I will say that these are really easy and that you can cable without a cable needle with them. That's what I did for my entire um, front panel. And so Selena has included a video tutorial for how to do that if, you've, if you're not familiar with that technique. Um, it's basically the only way that I knit cables because I don't have time to fuss around with a cable needle. The other thing I wanted to mention as far as tutorials go is there are a couple of tutorials, video tutorials also included um, with the pattern as far as seaming methods go because again, as mentioned, this is a seamed pieced together garment. Um, so up here at the top, you know, once you're done with your two panels, you sandwich them together and then seam them. Um, I did use the recommended mattress stitch up at the top here. And I found, I didn't really have any trouble with that up top. I actually um, just was curious and wanted to try more than one seaming method on this. So yeah, I seamed the neckline up here. And then you also seam down the body. 
underneath the armhole all the way down. So shout out to Naomi. <laughs> she was actually the one who suggested it in the test group chat that we had going on. Um, the crochet seamed method and it's really just as simple as it sounds. You're sticking your crochet hook into both panels, drawing the yarn through and then just you know, completing a single crochet. So yeah, I did that for the body and I did the mattress seam up top. Again, I'm just kind of took it as an opportunity to explore some new methods here, but there are video tutorials for both of those as well in the pattern. The last thing that I wanted to talk about as far as the construction goes is the neckline. So the back panel has less stitches than the front panel does, which means if you seam, if you line up stitch by stitch up here on the shoulders like I did, um, you're going to wind up with more fabric at the front than at the back. Now, when it's just sitting there and you've seamed it and you're kind of looking at it, it does look a little floppy in the front and you're kind of questioning it, but I promise you, once you block it out, um, it really, it lays actually very flattering. I feel like um, I, I personally like a boat neck sweater, um, so I really like the way that the neckline has turned out here. Blocking is magic, I will say that <laughs> until I'm blue in the face. Um, for the cables, for the neckline, for everything, Blocking really just takes your knitting to the next level. For the yarn that I used, I did use some of my own hand dyed yarn, um, the Felicity Yarn Studio, and I really wanted this specific color, like a deep spruce um, blue green with some, you know, just some deep kind of Christmassy tones. I don't know if I if I'm currently being influenced by the fact that it's the holiday season or the fact that the sample that Selena and Abby sent to everyone, the picture was in a very similar color, but I was like, yes, I want that. So I had really hoped to have some of this yarn dyed up and put in the shop um, by the time the pattern got released. Uh, that has not happened, but I will go ahead and put a listing for a pre-order up if anybody is interested in um, this new colorway, which I think I'm just going to call call it the obvious and call it spruced up. So I used some MCN High Twist. It's a two-ply yarn and it's a very round yarn and I intentionally used that since rounder yarns make for better plumper cables. So I do have some of that that I'll list for the pre-order as well as some sock yarn. I think that covers all of the pattern and kind of nitty gritty details. Um, so now let's talk fun stuff. As my niece would say, let's talk fashion. <laughs> um, <laughs> so again, this piece is very versatile. Um, I have worn it just with jeans. I have worn it with a high-waisted dress like over a dress. I've worn it with a maxi dress. Probably my favorite look though is the button down kind of dressier shirt with a pair of leggings and boots. So I'm going to put some of that footage here on the screen for you guys. Um, the only thing I didn't take footage of was the maxi dress. I was really just trying it on to see what the silhouette would look like together because the dress and the sweater do not they don't match <laughs> or complement each other at all. Um, and my linen dress, yeah, it doesn't really go with this jumper. As you all will see, I have paired it with a high-waisted linen skirt. I think this look is really adorable. I actually felt like I should be going to a holiday or a Christmas party or something in this outfit. It was very kind of girly and dainty. But then again, on the other end of the spectrum, um, I really liked the kind of sleek look with the black leggings and a button down top or flowy top underneath. And um, yeah, I don't know. I'm really looking forward to wearing this out next time we do date night or something. I don't know. We need to go see some Christmas lights and I think this is going to be my outfit for that. So as I mentioned, I want to give away a copy of the Ponderosa because I enjoyed knitting it so much. It's the holiday season. I feel like giving back to you all. So in the comment section down below, just let me know um, what was your favorite look, the skirt or the leggings or how would you um, style this? What would you wear it with? I would love to get some of y'all's feedback on that. And so since today is the 8th, I think I'm going to leave it open for two weeks. So on December 21st, I will go through the comments and do random comment picker and let you know in the comment if you have, want a copy of the pattern 
and you can either outgift it to you through Ravelry or I know Wool and Pine sells their patterns directly through their own website if you're unable to use Ravelry. So if you found this video helpful, you enjoyed watching it, you want to see more of this, um, go ahead and throw me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I really appreciate having you guys around and I should be back with a full podcast episode in about a week or so. I have a lot to share. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I hope that you have a wonderful holiday season and I will see you again soon. Bye. And on December 30th, December 21st,